This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. For your information, after helping out a local fire department, a young man from our area earns his Eagle Scout Award. We take you to the ceremony next. Happy New Week. I'm Ken Karen. This is FYI. Thank you so much for your time. Here's your local headlines now from FYI and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. State police need your help to find a man they describe as armed and dangerous. 25-year-old Lizandi Antonio Trejo, also known as Lee, is wanted on charges of aggravated assault and recklessly endangering another person after he fired three rounds into a vehicle occupied by five people around 4.30 Sunday morning on the Ebervale Road in Hazelton. Township. One bullet struck the rear window, one hit the trunk, and then the third struck the rear driver's wheel. One person in the vehicle suffered a laceration, which required medical treatment. State police say Trejo has no permanent address and is possibly operating a 2011 black BMW similar to the photo shown, bearing PA registration JMD3476. He has relatives in Hazleton and New York City. Anyone with information on Trejo's whereabouts is asked to contact state police at 570-459-3890. A Hazleton teen received scouting's highest honor. 18-year-old Anthony Kundro received the Eagle Scout Award during an Eagle Scout Court of Honor yesterday at the West Hazleton Fire Company. Kundro produced an edit and edited a recruitment video for the West Hazleton Fire Company as his Eagle Scout project. The road to Eagle was not an easy one. There were plenty of challenges including merit badges, personal fitness and life saving. A full term served as senior patrol leader, a community service project, and for my project, I chose to do a recruitment film for the West Hazleton Fire Company. This impact this video had was incredible, and I'm so glad I chose to do it. It has inspired other fire stations to make similar videos and brought a lot of recognition to my work. This video is my greatest work so far, and without scouts, it wouldn't exist. I never would have reached so high or worked so hard for anything like I did for this video. The video was uploaded to YouTube in June and has received close to 1,000 views. Anthony served as an intern here at SSP TV and we congratulate him on earning his Eagle Scout Award. A record number of items and monetary donations were collected by the Can Do Student Action Committee. The items were recently delivered to American Legion Post 473 in Freeland as part of the 11th annual Operation Can Do Drive. The food, books, and personal care items will be used in care packages for soldiers, airmen, and Marines serving abroad who have local ties to the greater Hazleton area. If you have a friend or loved one serving abroad, you can submit names and contact information to Can Do, care of Nancy Stasco, 1 South Church Street, 2 200 Renaissance Center, Hazleton, PA 18201, or you can call 570-455-1580, or you can email nstasco at hazeltoncando.com. The Hazleton Area School District is inviting public input as part of a new community outreach effort. Our Lisa Sugar has the latest from the man behind the new program, District Superintendent Dr. Craig Butler. Pleased to welcome back Dr. Craig Butler, the Superintendent of Schools for the Hazelton Area School District, to talk about a brand new initiative that he has implemented in the district, looking for community input. So you've created a community outreach committee, Dr. Butler, which is interesting. So how's that, how has it gone so far? Extremely well, Lisa. I'm so excited about this. Uh, this is one of my personal goals as being a new superintendent in the district. And the, the whole objective is to um, really show an air of transparency, if you will, in terms of um, allowing parent voice to be heard, recognized, and valued, and for our parents and our community at large, stakeholders of the school district to be respected and to have their voice count in terms of the ongoings of the school and as we work for continuous improvement. The first meeting was a couple of weeks ago. We had very good attendance. Uh, we had a nice cross-section of the community, I think. And that's very important as we're trying to reach out to all sectors of the Hazleton Area School District uh, and welcome uh, folks into discussions with us. Uh, we are really forwarding ourselves in terms of where we're meeting. We're uh, relocating, I guess you might say, the meetings throughout the community, some in the valley, some in the city, for example. Mm -hmm. And we really want to reach out to every sector of the school community and invite the parents into helping us improve as a school district. 
So when you're hosting these meetings, what kind of input are you looking for? Are people coming there mainly with questions or are they looking to have a problem solved? What, what do you see this as? What type of forum is this? It's really a variety so far, uh, Lisa. I started out the last meeting sharing some goals uh, from the superintendent's seat and some district-wide goals that we've worked on administratively. And that kind of set the tone, I think, for the meeting. But what parents uh, and um, stakeholders of the community seem to be doing so far is if they had an item of concern, they bring that. It might be a question, it might be a suggestion, uh, it might be information seeking, if you will. Um, some others just come to listen and participate and hear more about the district and what's going on. And even though we invite parents to committee meetings and board meetings, it's more of a structured and formal setting. It's difficult for parents perhaps to feel relaxed and mm -hmm. uh, be able to express themselves in a smaller, more intimate setting. That might be a little intimidating when they have to go speak at a podium at a school board meeting as opposed to sitting down and chatting with some parents and the superintendent. As you said, in a casual atmosphere, they might be more receptive to that. Yes, in fact, um, and I applaud our school directors for always having an open door in terms of parents and community members coming to the board meetings. But I think this offers a totally different venue. Uh, we're not inhibited by time, for example. Um, we, we encourage an open atmosphere, an, an atmosphere of transparency. Uh, we're willing to hear suggestions. Uh, we're willing to hear and tackle the difficult uh, subjects, we, which you can do when you're not uh, necessarily boxed in by a certain time constraint or a uh, setting that, would, that folks wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable in. Each meeting takes place this Thursday, November 12th at 6.30 p.m. at the Butler Township Building in Drums. Well, coming up next, we have a preview of the next great act coming to our area as part of the Greater Hazleton Concert Series. And later, I have big news regarding our Cole Scale High School football rankings. Stay tuned for a special announcement. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Core Fitness is hosting a Zumbathon to benefit Brandon's Forever Home on Sunday, November 29th from 4 to 6 p.m. at the gym. There's also going to be tricky trays, and you don't have to be dancing to take a chance at winning them. You can just stop by in between 4 and 6 p.m. to enter, and you don't have to be present to win. There's also going to be refreshments and other prizes. To reserve your spot, call 570-455-7818. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. A cloudy, cloudy day in Hazleton on Monday, and it's a sign of things to come until Friday of this week. Let's look at our local weather forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, a chance of rain, 30% chance. Mainly after 4 a.m., it will be cloudy with a low of 41 degrees. East wind from 3 to 8 miles per hour. On our four-day outlook, Tuesday, 80% chance of rain. Mainly after 8 a.m., our high will be 55 degrees. New precipitation amounts between a quarter and a half of an inch possible on Tuesday night. Once again, rain mainly before 3 a.m. Our low will be 44 degrees. And then on Veterans Day, there's a 30% chance of rain before 7 a.m., but partly sunny with a high near 54. And then on Wednesday night, slight chance of showers after 1 a.m., partly cloudy. Our low will be 42 degrees. On Thursday, once again, showers likely. It will be cloudy with a high of 54 degrees. Thursday night, mostly cloudy, low of 41. And then on Friday, the sun comes out mostly sunny with a high near 50. And then Friday night, partly cloudy with a low of 35 degrees. This Friday marks the third in the series of the Greater Hazleton Concert Series. We're pleased to welcome back Amelia Bergeron, the president of the Greater Hazleton Concert Series, to talk about So Good for the Soul, a tribute to Motown. This sounds exciting, Amelia. It is going to be a very exciting concert. Uh, it's nonstop, high octane, uh, featuring the musicians who actually, some of them actually performed with the Marvelettes, the Jones, uh, Main Management, 
and it will also be peppered with Broadway entertainers who have had leading roles in such Broadway productions like uh, Dream Girls, Porgy and Bess, uh, Showboat. So it is truly a professional, professional, professional performance. Uh, they are going to come, eight of them, with their band and will present the music of the performers from Motown. The musical director, Gary Cooper, or Cupper, whichever you prefer, has, um, he has drawn attention to the slightest nuances of the music and the instrumental arrangements to make it sound like the, exactly the original Mo Motown sound. And to carry over from that to even the costuming was done by um, a woman who won uh, an award for her costuming. The group will um, truly engage the audience. You may find yourself singing or humming or tapping your feet, and that is most welcomed by the group. Uh, you will hear such um, uh, people like Martha Reeves and the Vandellas, the Four Tops, Gladys Knight, Smokey Robinson, Marvin Gaye, Mary Wells, Stevie Wonder, Lionel Richie, the Supremes, Four Tops, the Temptations, Diana Ross, and even some Michael Jackson numbers. Um, I encourage everybody to come out if you like the oldies because you will hear so many of those songs that were made popular by the performers that I have just mentioned. And you cannot beat the price. And the price of the tickets for this? Well, individual tickets are $30. We still will be selling our membership tickets. This will be the last opportunity to buy them. They are prorated. So you still have that opportunity to see our four last performances at a highly reduced rate. People say to me, well, how can you do that? If you know other people are, are charging $85, $125 for a ticket, how can you charge 30 or $100 for six concerts? And I say, well, that's because of the support of our patrons and because I write a lot of grants. <laughs> well, that's good to know. This is fabulous entertainment that comes to our area made possible by the Greater Hazelton Concert Series. It's taking place this Friday, November 13th, 7.30 p.m., Hazelton Area High School. You can learn more at hazeltonconcertseries.org. Call Amelia at 570-788-4864. And Amelia was kind, as always, to bring us along a pair of tickets for one lucky viewer in our audience. So please call the number up on your screen right now. We'll enter your name into the drawing and we'll pick one lucky person that gets to go to the concert and see, the concert and see Amelia there on Friday. Thank you so much for telling us all about this and come back and let us know when the next four concerts will be taking place. As long as I'm invited, I'll be back. You're <laughs> always welcome. Amelia Bergeron from the Greater Hazelton Concert Series. Thank you again, Lisa. Now here's your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers on FYI. Pick 286, pick 3, 416, pick 4, 5342, and pick 5, 78323. I call an audible regarding our coal scale. Find out what's happening next. We'll be right back. This is FYI News 13 Sports. You know what's better than having one medal from the Cross Country State Championships? Having two medals from the Cross Country State Championships. Marion sophomore Tina Caparel picked up her second state medal over the weekend. Her time of 20 minutes and 18 seconds was good enough for 18th place in the single A race. She placed 16th last year for a medal. Congrats to her and all of our local runners who were at the state championships in Hershey over the weekend. Well, I know I said we were going to release the final coal scale rankings of the year. However, it's just way too close to call at this point. So I talked with the PIAA and they're going to let our teams in the anthracite grade play one more game. 
I don't have that kind of power, but the teams do, and all three qualified for the district playoffs, so we'll wait until after the first week of playoff games to hand out the title Kings of the Coal. So let's check out the penultimate coal scale. Shenandoah Valley, they finished the year in the league night grade, looking for a spark, but the Blue Devils showed flashes in 2015. They had a bunch of bright spots in the first half against rival Monoy area. Jeremy Urban Navage even gave the 462 football crew the lead after his first of two big touchdown catches. Ian McColl threw for over 250 yards and three touchdowns. It was a tight game in the first half, but the Golden Bears, they pulled away in the second half. To the bituminous grade, and these teams finished the year smoking hot, almost on fire. Hazelton area hung in there with Berwick. The offense had its chances, but Berwick caused three turnovers. Adrian Otero once again rushed for over 100 yards, and he just missed a 1,000-yard sophomore season. The Cougars D had a good night, only giving up just over 230 yards. Sophomore Josh Zukoski had two sacks, and senior Eddie Bielan had one sack. Tamaqua really screwed this up in our rankings and I'm sure they couldn't be happier about it. They finished the season at 500 by beating their big rival and our number one team from last week, Marion Catholic. Senior Colin Bud Moyer carried the ball 35 times in his swan song. Moyer danced to 142 yards and three touchdowns. The Blue Raiders finished the season topping our bituminous grade. To the anthracite grade, who's on top? I have absolutely no idea. We'll see after next week. North Schuylkill is hitting on all cylinders, and that's scarier than finding out there's no stuffing left on Thanksgiving. I don't know if that comparison does them any justice. In my mind, it does. The Spartans' defense gave up zero yards in the first half against Panther Valley. Bobby Grigas, who was injured for a part of the season, passed for 230 yards and three touchdowns, and Tevin Murray is catching everything thrown at him. They should have had him go out and get that runaway military blimp that crashed in PA. He would have brought it back in one piece. Mono area, the Golden Bears finished the regular season with a win over rival Shenandoah Valley. Two Bears closed out week 10 with over 1,000 rushing yards, Mason Ryan and Lenny Dolsky. Marion Catholic ended the regular season with a loss and they lost their running back KJ Snur to an injury. We'll see if he's ready for the playoffs as the Colts have a big shot at a district title and a Cole Scale title. One more week, my friends, for the Cole Scale. Stay tuned to see what happens. Well, here's how the Cole Scale will sort itself out. In the District 11 single-A playoffs, Marion will travel to Monoy area. Marion beat the Golden Bears during the regular season 35-7. North Schuylkill is the fourth seed in the District 11 double-A playoffs. They'll be at Notre Dame Green Pond. North Schuylkill, they beat Marion and lost to Monoy area earlier this year. And finally, we have some results from over the weekend on the FYI Standard Speaker Scoreboard. The Penn State Hazleton women, they're off to a 2-0 start. They get another non-conference victory. The men, they took their second loss of the season. On Friday, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins won their eighth straight game. This Friday night, the Hershey Bears come to Wilkes-Barre Township, and that's always fun. Ron Marchetti is also always a good time. Here he is with Trivia Treats. Trivia Treats on this November 9th. Hi everybody and welcome. On this day, exactly 55 years ago, in Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh during the 1960 season, former Hazel High School Mountaineers, Fort Letterman, outstanding athlete, Johnny Asino, then a junior for the Pitt Panthers, was involved in a controversial play that decided the game between Pitt and Army. The all-important call came late in the fourth quarter. It appeared that Army caught Yasino in that Panthers end zone. The linesman signaled a safety, which would have given Army a 9-7 lead and the ball. With two minutes left in the game, but another referee ruled that Yasino was down on the one-half yard line. That official, who was 20 yards away from the play, overruled the heads lineman, who was two yards away. Pitt then gained a few more yards inside their own 10-yard line before punting. Army then advanced into field goal range, with seconds left, the last play, a field goal attempt. The ball was snapped. The kick was up, end over end. It looked straight enough. It looked long enough. But it hit the crossbar and bounced harmlessly to the ground. Mother of God. No good. Final score, pit seven, army seven. That game was 55 years ago in 1960. This next trivia took place exactly 70 years ago today. The year was 1945. Television was not even invented yet. Number one ranked Army overpowered number two Notre Dame 48 nothing before a crowd of 75,000 at Yankee Stadium. Glenn Davis scored three touchdowns and Doc Blanchard two. The Irish came into that game unbeaten and only allowed their previous six opponents 22 points. It was the second straight embarrassment 
for Notre Dame against Army. The two schools met on the same field on November 11, 1944, when Army was number one and Notre Dame was ranked fifth. The cadets had crushed the Irish 59 nothing. Army finished the 1945 campaign with a 9-0-0 record, outscoring their opposition 412 to 46 for their second consecutive national championship. Finally, on this day in 1925, 90 years ago, Northwestern upset Michigan 3-2 in a game played during a driving rainstorm and a sea of mud at Soldier Field in Chicago. The only field goal turned out to be the only points Michigan would surrender all season while compiling a 7-1-0 record and outscoring your opposition 227-3. to Till Friday, be a good sport. Stay loose. Mondays can be rough, but you can end them on a high note. Seafood night at Bottlenecks. Choose from crab, clam, shrimp, and lobster specials, such as their little neck clams in garlic butter, only $1.95 a dozen, or handmade crab cake platter for only $8.95. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. The Weatherly Police are collecting non-perishable food and household-related items for the upcoming Christmas season. Items can be dropped off at the station, and they will be donated to the Shepherd House. Items needed are canned food, dry box food, gift cards for local markets, and more. For info, call 570-427-4241. And finally, the Butler Township Community Center will be holding a holiday craft fair Saturday, November 14th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The over 40 craft vendors with a huge variety of items and crafts for sale. Also be having a bake sale to support Drums Elementary. The Township Recreation Board is sponsoring the event and the center is located at 415 West Butler Drive in Drums. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Martha E. Bonzik of Freeland. Funeral is Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. from the McNulty Funeral Home. Friends may call Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Mary M. Cermic of Hazleton. Funeral is Wednesday at 10 a.m. in the St. Joseph's Church. Friends may call at the church Wednesday from 9 to 10 a.m. Arrangements are under the direction of the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. And Mary R. Gabriel, formerly of Hazleton. Mass is Thursday at 9.30 a.m. from the Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m. And finally tonight, in memory of Billy J. Ivanko. One year today, my beloved husband went away. Now you're my angel up above, the only man I'll ever love. Love from Charlotte. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Karen Lutz of Cunningham. Karen, if you're watching, give us a call, 570-455-7267, extension 104. If you're a Penn State fan like me and you're still trying to get over the loss on Saturday and maybe watch sports again, I have a way to ease us back into it. There's an all-new out of left field tonight at 8 p.m. right here on SSP TV. Check it out. Things will get better. Until tomorrow, take it easy, everyone. Cadillac, Hazleton, drive with experience.